Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Good day to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. It's Monday. I hope your day has started well, is going well. I pray that you're living a holy and pleasing life unto the Lord. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Second Peter in chapter 2. If you can, reach over, grab your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there, Second Peter in chapter 2. Verses 2 and 3 will be our focus here today. Along with your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes, I'll be giving a series of words today that I think will be valuable to you to rehearse and remind yourself of the things that we find in the Word of God today. And perhaps you may want to pass along the things you're learning today to somebody else as well. Talk about it over the dinner table. Encourage one another in the things of Scripture to help others grow as well. I've got a gospel tract here. I want to talk about it. It's entitled, I'm Keeping the Golden Rule. I've selected this one for a reason, but we'll get there here in just a moment. Let me lead into our study time this way. I have an opinion question for you. Here's the question. How important, on a scale of one to 10, how important is it to warn believers about false teachers? What would be your answer? Now, while you're pondering that, let me kind of help you think through that a little bit. Answer this one. Which is more important for a local church pastor to do? Would it be more important for him to preach the gospel or to warn people about false teachers? Well, obviously, both of those things are important, but which rises higher? To me, preaching the gospel does. But think with me for a moment. Who in the New Testament warned about false teachers? Well, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus did during the his Passion Week. He warned about false teachers. In the book of Acts chapter 20, when Paul was with the leaders of the church in Ephesus, he warned about false teachers, and he actually said that he had reminded them regularly during the three years that he served there about false teachers. And then the apostle John in 1 John 4 warned the believers in his day as well. Now, here in 2 Peter 2, it is Peter's turn. He is warning you and me because he learned about doing this warning ministry from the person that discipled him, Jesus himself. We need to be warned. Get your Bible, get pen and paper. Join me, 2 Peter chapter 2. I mentioned the gospel tract here a moment ago, and my friend, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The gospel tract in my hand is I'm keeping the golden rule. A lot of people know the golden rule. Basically, frankly, almost every religion in the world has their own version of it, but the one that Jesus taught is different. Jesus said this, as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Teaching the golden rule is done by many religious teachers as the way to heaven, but it's not. It was given as a life pattern to people who had been born again. This gospel tract begins with the golden rule and shows why it is a false foundation for your hope to go to heaven. And then it goes on to say, why is this rule Why can this rule not save you? Number one, you can't keep it. Point number three is salvation is in a person, not in a rule. Here's a great gospel tool. I'm keeping the golden rule. 
Let me send it to you, please. I want to send you an entire sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. My announcer will give you our contact information at the end of the broadcast. Have pen and paper ready for that. If perhaps you can't stay to the end, go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org. O-R-G. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Second Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, here's what the Bible says. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Stop, please, right there. I have laid out chapter 2 of Second Peter into five sections, and for each of those sections, I have a title with a key word beginning with a letter A, like in the word apple. Let me quickly give you all five of them right now. First of all, verses 1, 2, and 3, the word is apostates, apostates and their judgments. Part number two, verses 4 to 6, the word is ancient, ancient judgments. Part number three, verses seven, eight, and nine is the word answer. What's our answer during apostasy? Number four, the word is acts, acts worthy of judgment. That's verses 10 to 19. And finally, the word is acknowledgement, verses 20 to 22, acknowledgement of the danger. Now, obviously, we're in part number one, verses one, two, and three, the apostates and their judgment. Last week, I focused on verse 1, and in doing so, I gave four words, all beginning with the letter S, like in the word school, to identify key facts that are part of verse 1. Now, remember, when I talk about an apostate, I'm referring to a religious teacher who, yes, teaches error, but also they are somebody who knows what the Bible truth is, but they have willfully rejected it. Today, I want to focus on verses 2 and 3, and I'm going to be giving three words that begin with the letter M, like in the word money. Number one is this, morality, based upon verse 2, morality. Here's what verse 2 says, many shall follow their pernicious ways. Now, my friend, that word pernicious is not one I use every day, and I don't think you do either. That very word is used by Jesus, translated by a different English word over in Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus talks about the broad road that leads to destruction. The word destruction is our word pernicious. When Mary poured the oil on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair, the disciples ask, why did she make this waste? The word waste there in Matthew 26 and the word pernicious translate the same Greek word. These false prophets here lived lives and taught a life pattern that brought destruction and waste, but they taught that life pattern as if it was the correct way to live for God. So their morality was wrong. My second M word is the word maligning, based upon still verse 2. Verse 2 goes on to say this, by reason of whom, speaking of the false teachers, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Now, as I read those words, I am struck by the fact that that word way, W-A-Y, is singular and not plural. The verse does not say that the ways of truth, as if there were a plurality of religious ways that can get us to truth, in the book of Acts, as the church began, believers were sometimes referred to as people of the way. That's because Jesus described himself as the way, the truth, and the life. To live in the way of truth meant that you were learning about Jesus and then you were taking action steps to live out what you learned so that you could live like Jesus. But false teachers teach a pluralism. 
Oh, I've heard some of these teachers say this, that they themselves follow Jesus, but they are not openly or clearly saying that other saviors are wrong and other ways to get to heaven are wrong. That kind of a person is a false teacher. We need teachers who not only know the way and know it is the way and then denounce other false ways. Word number one, morality. Word number two, maligning, both based upon verse two. My third M word is the word merchandising based upon verse three. Look at verse three. It says this, through covetousness shall they, that again referring to false teachers, through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. The you here are believers. Notice that the apostates use what's called here feigned or false word. You want to learn something interesting? The Greek word translated feigned here is the word we get our our English word plastic from. The Greek word looks like the word plastic. It means to have the ability to mold or shape something. These false teachers are good at molding and shaping their words to sound true and give the illusion that they're speaking biblically accurately, but they are forging words and molding words words to fool their listeners. But not only do we see the words that these false teachers are using, we notice the worth of people to them, the worth of people to these false teachers. In the mind and the heart of these kinds of religious teachers, these false teachers, the people they are preaching to and teaching have value because of what the teacher can get out from them. These teachers use people to get rich to make merchandise of. Now listen, money is not evil, but the love of money is. When a teacher says that if Jesus were doing ministry today, he would certainly live in a multi-million dollar home, and he would certainly ride around in a multi-million dollar airplane. Friend, when you hear that, listen to me, please. Don't tell me what Jesus would do. That's sheer presumption. Just please tell me what he did do from the authoritative word of God. Did Jesus in the New Testament, did Jesus live above those he ministered to or did he live at their level? Well, friend, Jesus lived a common man's life. I think that that's the pattern we ought to follow. That's a pattern to which I can put chapter and verse. So we must ask ourselves these kind of questions. Who am I listening to as my spiritual teachers? What is their moral life like? Do they use a lot of words but seem to say nothing, or they make unclear what the Bible says clearly? Are the teachers I am listening to living like kings at my expense? If you ask those questions and your teachers that you're listening to get the answers wrong, then you have, well, you've got a bad teacher. And there's one thing you ought to do, run away as fast as you can and trust the word of the living God. The Bible is right. Don't let man twist you away from the clarity of the word of God. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.